Good morning, everybody. I've had quite a few requests for a video on growing raspberries in containers. So that is what we are doing today. Really any raspberry can be grown in a container, but there is a newish variety that was bred specifically for containers called raspberry shortcake. And I've got two plants of the raspberry shortcake raspberry that I'm gonna be potting up today. It's thornless, compact, and requires no staking at just two to three feet tall and wide at maturity. You can grow other varieties in a container, but they will get larger. Crimson Knight is a favorite of mine. Joan Jay is a really nice thornless red raspberry. And Heritage is an old heirloom favorite. And all of those can be grown in large pots. Raspberry varieties other than raspberry shortcake are going to get larger, typically at least five feet tall. So they're probably going to require some kind of staking or support. You might consider something just like a traditional tomato cage placed over your plant in the pot, or you can just go with some simple stakes. But it is easier to get those in place at the same time that you're potting up your plant versus waiting till you realize that your plant needs some support. Something else to consider variety wise is that most raspberries are going to do best in zones four or five through about eight or nine. And that's going to vary a little bit depending again on the variety. So just be sure to select a variety that is compatible with your growing zone. Raspberry shortcake is supposedly best suited for zones four through nine. And raspberries are self-pollinating, so you will be able to get fruit with just one plant. The second consideration is pot size. Now the company that introduced raspberry shortcake, bushel and berry, suggests on their website that you select a container that is at least 16 inches wide and 12 inches deep. And I believe that's gonna hold around 10 to 12 gallons of potting medium. If you're going with a bigger variety, consider an even larger container. I go with something like a 20 gallon grow tub at a minimum, all the way up to something as large as like a half whiskey barrel planter, which is typically gonna be about 24 to 26 inches across and can hold up to 60 gallons. And I frequently get questions from folks about pot size. Can I go smaller? You may not have a pot quite this large on hand. And the answer is yes, of course. Um, the reason that I recommend such large pots is because I'm looking at the mature size of the plant. So it may take a couple of years for that plant to totally fill out, but I wanna put it in a pot and not have to transplant it over and over and over as that plant grows. So I wanna pick a pot size that is relative to the mature size of the plant that I'm growing. And a final word on containers, good drainage is a must. If there is one surefire way to kill a raspberry plant, it is to allow it to sit in water. Raspberries hate wet, feet. So having their roots sit in water or sit in very damp, saturated soil. So before you plant, either just make sure that your container has plenty of drainage holes in the bottom. So this is, I think about a 16 by 12 inch container. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine holes along the base. If you've got a plastic pot and it doesn't have holes, just drill some out really quickly. Otherwise, something like a fabric grow bag, which allows water to drain out through the fabric, will work. Just make sure that water can escape from your container. The next key component is soil or potting medium. Raspberries do best in soil, which is loamy, rich in organic matter, slightly acidic, so in the 6.0 to 6.2 range, and of course, well draining. What I am using today is just a mixture of some potting soil, sustainably harvested peat, leaf mold, and compost. But it's really easy to make your own potting medium and you can tweak this recipe based on what you have on hand to best suit your needs. Now you do not have to use exactly what I am using today. You can use a mixture of ingredients, things like sustainably harvested peat or coconut core, perlite or vermiculite, leaf mold, especially from oak leaves as they tend to be slightly acidic, composted wood chips, or just standard mixed compost. A really basic recipe that you can use is three parts compost and or leaf mold, three parts sustainably harvested peat moss or coconut core, two parts composted pine bark or pine fines, and three parts perlite. 
Add all of your ingredients to a large tub and mix well. Fill your planting container approximately three quarters full of your planting mix. Add fertilizer, if using, to the planting hole according to the application instructions on the packaging. Gently loosen your plant from its pot and break up the root ball slightly with your fingers. If you're planting bare root plants, this step won't apply. For potted plants, set them in your container at the same level they were growing in the nursery pot. So you want the existing soil to be on the same level as the soil in your pot. Add in more planting mix if needed to level everything up. If you're planting bare root plants, set the plants so that the root flare, or the part of the stem at the bottom of the plant just before the roots begin, is level with the soil line. Firm the soil down around the plant. Thoroughly saturate the soil with water. And I give this some time for the water to soak all the way through so that if things shift and settle, I can top that planting mix off. Sometimes I'll also do this step prior to placing my plant in the pot. And finally, I add a layer of natural mulch, something like grass clippings, leaf mulch, or wood chips to help keep the soil from drying out too quickly. Now, if you have a really nice nutrient-rich mix that you're planting into, you may not even need to fertilize your plants, but I always like to err on the safe side and give them a little nutritional boost. You can feed your raspberry plants at planting time with a balanced fertilizer, and in subsequent years, feed first thing in the spring and then again when fruit begins to form. I'm using a quarter cup of Gurney's raspberry and blackberry food, which is an all natural 4 2 4 fertilizer but a balanced 10, 10, 10 will work as well. Just be sure to follow the instructions on the packaging. Location is going to be key for your raspberry plant success. You'll want to position your container in an area that receives full sun or at least six hours of sunlight a day with the option in very hot climates to provide some afternoon shade. Now raspberries will grow in partial shade but typically the yield is going to be less and your berries won't usually have as high of sugar content. Now, of course your plant is going to need water as well. Now I mentioned that raspberries don't like wet feet, but they do need plentiful, consistent moisture. If you don't receive adequate rainfall, you'll want to provide your plants with a supplemental one to two inches of water per week. In an average climate, that's usually watering about once a week. In very hot, dry areas, two to three times a week in a container may be necessary. Now, once you've got your raspberry planted, you want to ensure that you're taking proper care of it so that you can enjoy big crops of tasty fruit. Depending on your climate, the way that you overwinter your plants in containers might be a little different. Here in zone 6A in Ohio, I don't have to do anything special. I might move my containers to a slightly sheltered part of the house or the barn, but they do just fine sitting out all winter in the cold. If you live in a colder climate, you may want to insulate the base of your pots with something like hay or straw or leaf mulch just to keep that soil a little warmer through the winter. Moving your containers to an unheated garage or greenhouse can work as well. Just keep in mind that raspberries on average require 800 chill hours, which is just the time spent at temperatures of 45 degrees Fahrenheit and below to remain productive. So don't keep them too warm through the winter months. And with proper care, most raspberries will begin fruiting within a year or two of planting. So you're able to enjoy fresh fruit relatively quickly after planting. One last consideration is pruning. So with raspberry shortcake specifically, the only pruning required is to cut back dead or unproductive canes to soil level. But with raspberries in general, there are two different types. There are primocane and floricane fruiting raspberries. And the pruning requirements are gonna be a little different for each of those. For floricane or summer bearing types, the general advice is just to cut all the canes back to the ground after fruit set is over. But with primocanes, you'll also see them called fall bearing or ever bearing types. You've got a couple of different pruning options. Depending on whether you want a large fall crop, a large summer crop, or two crops a year, you're gonna prune a little differently. 
You can treat them just like a floor cane, have them set a large summer crop, and then mow all the canes back after that fruit set. Those canes will then grow back and you'll get another large summer crop the following year. This is a great option in places where you have short seasons and your season may not be long enough to allow fruit to ripen in the fall. If you want a large fall crop, you can cut all of the canes back to the ground in the fall after that fruit set has finished. Again, allowing those canes to grow back and then become productive for next fall. And if you want your plants to set two crops of fruit, summer and fall, you're going to use yet another tactic. And because I am not an expert on primocane fruiting raspberry pruning, I'm going to read to you from the Norse Farms website, which by the way is a great resource for all things raspberry pruning related and blackberry pruning related. But they say when primocanes are cut back, two nodes below where the full fruit was produced and allowed to stand through the winter into their second year, another crop is produced early the following summer. The summer crop then develops on lateral branches on overwintered canes. In order to develop two crops, the plant must be pruned as summer bearing varieties. After harvesting the summer crop, cut the overwintered canes to the ground leaving the new primocanes to produce the fall crop. So what's important there is that you have to identify and distinguish between the primocanes and the older floricane stems, which have already produced a crop. So it's a great technique, but it can be a little tricky for a, a brand new grower. Well, that's all there is to it. Now the agonizing wait for ripe fruit begins. I'm gonna get that second plant potted up, but if you found today's video useful, please consider subscribing to my channel, Grow Fully with Jenna. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.